What's up, what's up? It's your boy, Corey B. I want to talk about uh, psychological pacification. Okay, so, <laughs> it's a really cool thing. Even when you know about it, even when you know, it still makes you feel good. It still makes you feel good. You still get that warm feeling inside like you've been, like something's been done or like you've been taken care of when ultimately you have been pacified. That's right. <laughs> but when people don't understand it or they don't know that it's a real thing or they don't know that it's going on, then all of a sudden they, they begin to speculate about things that are just ultimately silly. It happened a lot through this pandemic. Oh man, it happened a lot. Because everybody was so polarized throughout the, um, people were so polarized polarized about their, their stance on COVID, their stance about how to deal with it, uh, their stance on how the government was handling it, their stance on what was really best and safest for different people, and everybody had their own thoughts, and every, everybody was an expert too, that's, that's the thing. Not only was that everybody an expert, but everybody began speculating that everybody else was brainwashed. Like, these people said those people were brainwashed. Those people said these people were brainwashed. And everybody was just, you know, up and, uh, you know, just... <laughs> people were so ruffled and just so bothered and just... Con people literally were seeking out something to... have a problem with. Okay, so this... <laughs> As, as the world began opening back up and as uh, businesses and restaurants and stuff began opening back up, restaurants began doing things to make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Um, one in particular that, that I, that I want to talk about is the sanitizing. <laughs> there are people... I knew people who would get so bothered and they're like, oh, we're being brainwashed to coat everything in a thin layer of sanitizer and this and that. As someone who used to work in a restaurant and actually got food safe certified in the state of Texas. Um, now, this was, you know, some years ago, but the reality is, is that I, you know, worked with several people. We all went through different classes and courses to make sure we were food safe certified in the according to the state of Texas and their guidelines of what you have to do in order to be uh, to serve food to people and actually charge people money. Um, there, there's things and guidelines that you have to do. Something that has been around since at least the 90s is every table had to be sanitized. Every countertop had to be sanitized. You had to do this every time. Like, every time anybody used the table, multiple times, like every half hour, you went around and re-sanitized all the tables. You wiped down the counter again. Some restaurants were more diligent about it. Some, you know, staff members were more diligent about it. Some of them were better about being on top of things. Some of them weren't. And of course, there were times when things would get busy and you'd barely have time to wipe down the table between, ta between new patrons that came in. But ultimately, uh, there were standards that said, you were supposed to do it between each one and at least every half hour, if not sooner. Um, but they didn't tell you this because nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to think about your table being sanitized. You just, you want the thought when you come to eat food, you want the thought of chemicals and cleaners and everything out of your mind. You don't want to think about that. So the food servers know this, the restaurants know this, the people managing the place know this, they all know that this has to be done and they make sure that it's done and they make sure that they're doing these things properly and if ever there's, and, and randomly, um, throughout the year you're inspected, uh, having managed a restaurant before and having worked in multiple different uh, restaurants before, um, I'm aware that you are inspected regularly, and when you're inspected, your people better be doing it right, or you'll fail that inspection. And if you fail, depending on how badly you fail, they'll give you a second chance to redeem yourself. They'll come back within a couple of weeks and without warning and come back, and hopefully you score off the charts and redeem yourself. But if you fail too bad, they'll close you up. Um, I've heard of people doing that, but I've never worked at a place that was that... Uh, had it that bad. I never even worked in a chain where one of my fellow restaurants got closed. Um, but I've known of people. But anyways, um, so these are things, like I said, 
ultimately, they don't tell you that they're sanitizing constantly because nobody wants to think about that. You just want to believe that all your food magically comes to you and it's perfectly delicious and it, it has never been touched by hands before. You don't want to think about those things. But they're real. And if you really just take a moment, of course they're real. Of course they're cleaning your table. Why would you want them to not clean your table? Why would you want your table to be unsanitized? But amidst the pandemic, and as the end of the pandemic came, then all of a sudden restaurants were opening back up, and as they were opening back up, to give you a warm, fuzzy feeling because we were paranoid and terrified of the horrible coronavirus that could, you know, kill people and stuff. So what they did is they told you, they started advertising. They put a little sign on their window or on their door that said, we sanitize our tables. Really? Oh. So before Corona, you didn't. No, of course they did. But before Corona, you didn't want to know they did. So they didn't tell you. Now, because of Corona, you want to know. But then people began to get all up in a tizzy and be like, well, how dare they co constantly think that they must code everything. No, they've always been doing that. They've been doing that ever since you've ever went to a restaurant anywhere. Otherwise, the restaurant would have been closed down. But you didn't want to know that before. And the thing is, is honestly, uh, some people really don't want to know that now. But to some people, it gives them a warm feeling inside that their table is clean and they're free and safe to eat there. And they have no concerns of the horrible coronavirus. And I'm not saying the virus isn't horrible. I'm just saying that it's psychological and it's marketing. They're telling you what you want to hear. They're telling you what they believe you want to hear. What they believe that you want to hear. Now maybe they're wrong and maybe some people didn't want to hear that. And maybe some people did want to hear other things. Nobody's ever going to get it all right. But they're doing the best they can. They're trying to keep their business open and they're trying to keep you coming back in. That's the goal here. There's other psychological things that are <laughs> pacifiers throughout our society. Did you know Did you know, hmm, that any modern, uh, well, not any, most modern elevators, they have this um, door close button. Most of them are dummy buttons. Did you know uh, that most of the larger cities, huge cities uh, throughout the um, United States, that the the crosswalk button that has the little, the boys call it the walkman, <laughs> that lets you know you can cross the street safely, that that little button is a dummy button in most of the bigger cities now. Of course, the older posts that have been there for, you know, 40, 50 years, if they haven't been replaced in the last decade, maybe not, I don't know. But uh, most of them, as they've been upgraded, they've been replaced with dummy buttons, and they've been put on synchronized timers, so that way when the light turns red, that Walkman pops up regardless of whether you're there or whether you ever push that button or not. You push that button because you feel like it's doing something. It makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside that, hey, you pushed a button and there's going to be a blinking man that's going to let you cross. You push the button on the elevator and, hey, that door's going to close just a bit faster. It was about to close anyways. Now, there are obviously some elevators that do have those buttons that actually work. And there are some crosswalks that absolutely, in South Austin, there's... Um, crosswalks that still have the old school working buttons they are not dummy buttons i am 100 percent sure because when my boys are with me we always push that button when they're not with me i never push that button i just wait for my turn to walk and when it's clear to walk i walk and when i don't push that button that little walk man never pops up so but you can test it out in some of the bigger cities test it out i dare you go check it out there are there are cities that have literally reported that it's a real thing um like i said the psychological pacifiers that are in our society they're there to make us feel warm and fuzzy. And some people get it wrong and do things that ultimately don't make us warm and fuzzy. And ultimately, they can't please everybody because we're all different. So there's going to be th different things that make you feel better, make others feel worse. My point is, like, let's stop being bothered by it. If they did it to make someone else feel good, let the other person feel good. If you think it's stupid, just ignore it and move on. If you think it's stupid, the little buttons in the elevator, the little buttons on the crosswalk. Like I said, when the boys aren't with me, I just walk. I walk when it's clear, and when it's not clear, I don't walk. As far as the people putting the little sign, you know what? I don't think about it because that sign could be a lie. They could put that little sign and say, I've sanitized all the tables, and ultimately, they could have been real lazy and not sanitized a single table. Or maybe the manager put that there, and it's been there for two weeks, and not single. the lazy employees that the manager took went on vacation haven't bothered to clean the tables. Ah, you don't want to think about that, though, now, do you? At the end of the day, like I said, stop thinking things through so much. Stop overthinking about it. Stop overanalyzing. Stop complaining. Stop 
just whining and just get over it. There are much more important things in our society to complain about the pacifiers that people put there to make us feel better. Either feel better about it or don't. But to complain about it? Come on. Let's do better. All right. Y'all go enjoy your day. <laughs> do something fun. It's Saturday. It's beautiful. Look at this, Texas. Woo, man. Ooh. It's warm. But there's a nice little breeze out here. I'm going to enjoy my day. Me and the boys, we went. We got up early this morning, went out for kolaches and uh, donuts, and we sat on the front porch eating and letting white girl, our little puppy, just hang out there with us. And um, we had a good old time. And so I've been working, trying to get some stuff done this afternoon, but I'm going uh, I'm, to uh, spend some more time outside with the boys here in a little bit whenever they're ready to come back out. I hope y'all enjoy your day. Live it up. God is good. And um, let's stop complaining and do better. Be sure you subscribe, ding that bell, get your notifications. Stay tuned. I got more coming at you. I got nothing but love for all of y'all. I'm out.